Hello, friends. Today, we are going to talk about development and qualification of adeno-associated virus neutralizing antibody assays. Adeno-associated virus, there are 13 serotypes uh, naturally known, AV1 to 13, and uh, many more recombinant and synthetic ones. Uh, best characterized and most commonly used are AV2 and 9. AV are small viruses that infect humans and some other primate species. Genus and family are dependoparvovirus and parvovidae. They are not known to cause any disease in human or animals, and that's why it, it is very attractive uh, platform to use in the gene therapy. Uh, transmission routes, you can think of uh, respiratory, gastrointestinal, possibly sexual transmission, and also vertical transmission from mother to fetus exists. So that makes it very difficult if few animals are uh, infected in a colony, makes it very difficult to stop it. Tissue tropism of different AAV serotypes. So these 13 and many more recombinant and synthetic one we talked about, uh, one of the beauty of them is that they differ in their ability to infect certain tissue types uh, or cell types. This makes it a very uh, good system for preferentially transducing or transferring a gene therapy molecule or gene insert to a specific cell type. For example, AAV9 uh, is useful in many, many studies, whereas AAV8 is only useful for uh, a smaller number of uh, diseases like uh, pancreatic disease. Uh, AAV9, on the other hand, can be used for CNS, cardio, liver, lung, and skeletal muscle-related disease. Um, but overall, it is important to know neutralizing antibodies in non-human primate sera for gene therapy studies and use negative or low titer in non-human primates only. And I'll tell you why. Uh, this is to overcome the challenge in the AV gene therapy. Uh, the people who are pre-exposed to one or many of the other 13 canonical AAV serotypes, they form antibodies against these uh, uh, specific viruses. And uh, these, the, the uh, antibodies, uh, including the neutralizing antibodies, circulate in the blood, which can prevent the delivery of AAV viral vectors to the appropriate target tissues in the body, which can compromise the clinical success of the, uh, uh, these uh, gene therapies uh, studies. Uh, so. Whatever is the issue in case of human beings, it's the same for the research studies or research animals, especially involving the large animal species, including the non-human primates. So the, uh, therefore, it is important to pre-screen the animals for antibodies prior to including them in a research study and try to use uh, negative, if not possible, then low neutralizing antibody animals in the study. And how to detect these uh, uh, antibodies or how to detect AAV in the animals? It can be detected by serology or PCR. PCR can only detect current infection and presence of vi uh, virus, whereas uh, antibodies uh, tell you whether it has been uh, infected in the past too. Um, if we look for the total antibody assays, um, there is a highly prevalence uh, this virus and multiple routes of transmission, as I've shown in my previous slide, uh, then it is hard to control uh, or find uh, enough uh, seronegative participant animals for the studies. So therefore, AV neutralizing antibody assays, which are cell-based assays, are commonly used for uh, screening of uh, AV neutralizing antibodies. We can use serum and we do uh, qualitative and quantitative assays. Our qualitative assays is uh, neutralizing antibody screening assay where three different dilutions, one to 10, 20, and 40. Uh, samples are tested at these dilutions and samples are reported as positives or negative. Uh, and then in the titer assay, an actual titer is given uh, where the samples are diluted from one to 10 to 5,120. And the last dilution at which the sample it was positive is reported as the titer of this, that particular serum sample. This is a cartoon depiction of how this assay is run. Uh, you take the cells and plate them in a 96-well format. 
with the AAV vector um, uh, using a promoter, which can be CMV, CAG, and, and of course, a reporter uh, like Luciferase or GFP. You incubate for average two to three days and then add the substrate to, uh, to read the final reaction in terms of reduction in luminescence signal. So, uh, and that is done by an ELISA reader. If antibodies are present in the serum sample, they will compete and will not let the vector release the uh, luciferase. Uh, uh, and then uh, there will be a reduction. So overall greater than or equal to 50% reduction in luminescence signal can uh, be called as positive. So the samples uh, showing the reduction greater than or equal to 50% uh, in luminescence signal are called positive. AAV neutralizing antibody assay optimization. Before we actually did and developed all these assays, there is a lot of optimization which has gone into that one, including the evaluation of cell lines, cell passages, medium optimization, uh, time of incubation, which can vary from one to four days. We wanted to see how far we can go. Uh, and then multiplicity of infection. But most important of all of them is vector optimization or vendor selection or a particular lot of vector selection or evaluation. Here is some of that data. Uh, here is the, the graph on the left-hand side shows that um, AAV9 vector was incubated with two different cell lines, HEK 293 and HeLa cells. And then uh, as you can see, there's a two-fold difference easily between the uh, two cell lines. Here is the vendor evaluation or uh, two different vendors. We purchased uh, AAV2 and AAV9 vector. And uh, then uh, they were run on the assays. And as you can see, the vendor two had very high signal compared to vendor one, uh, which is the brown bars. And uh, for AAV2, it was a tenfold difference in signal, but for AV9, actually, it was a hundredfold difference. So that, that suggested a poor quality of reagent from vendor one, as it did not in, uh, do not increase uh, the signal with time even. It's important to evaluate or pre-screen the vendor for better signal and assay reproducibility. Again, similarly, we from the same vendor two, we purchased two different lots, and we found that there is a fourfold difference. So as you can see in the uh, graph on the left hand side that the uh, lot number one in the blue bars had a much higher signal than the uh, brown bars, which is the lot number two. So which confirmed that even from the same vendor, you may have lot to lot variation, uh, thus confirming it is very important to evaluate or pre-screening uh, different lots from the vendor to determine appropriate MOI for assay reproducibility or assay RLU values. So once we were finished with the development, we have done the assay qualification. And uh, the final qualification was done by multi-tech, multi-days, two-tech, three days with same known negative and positive samples. Uh, but first we did analytical sensitivity, the LOD between two technicians, analytical specificity using multiple uh, antibodies for different serotypes and uh, testing with AV2 or 9. And then uh, for diagnostic sensitivity and specificity, as I've mentioned above, that multi-tech, multi-day uh, with eight non-negative and eight non-positive samples to check the diagnostic sensitivity and specificity, in addition, reproducibility and ruggedness. And the report is also available on our website, Charles River website, crever.com. So to compare the analytical sense, uh, sensitivity of AV2 LOD titers between two texts, we uh, diluted four samples from starting from 1 to 40 to 5,120 with a total of eight dilutions. As you can see, the uh, pattern of uh, curve looks similar and all four samples cross the neutralization threshold within one to four dilution of each other. As you can see in this uh, table, uh, here is the actual uh, numbers. Uh, they, they were within two-fold of each other. 
As for the specificity was confirm, uh, concerned for AAV2, you can see two uh, different dilutions of uh, uh, zero specific uh, antibodies were used, 500 nanogram and 15.6 nanogram per ml. And AV2 suppressed signal at both high and low concentration, whereas no change with the rest of the serotypes, making it AV2 specific in picking up AV2 neutralizing antibodies. However, we saw that at higher concentration, there was a little bit of difference uh, uh, at 500 nanogram. So although uh, AAV9 is uh, specific in picking up uh, AAV9 neutralizing antibodies, at higher concentration, we may see some cross-reaction, including AAV with AAV8 and AAV1. Overall diagnostic sensitivity and specificity was 92% and 100%. Um, and one known positive was borderline between 45 to 55% RLU signal. And that's why you can see that sample uh, caused the sensitivity to drop a little bit. But overall the signal and scores between the two uh, technician were very similar for individual samples between three runs. I haven't shown that data due to uh, positive time. There are uh, multiple resources available uh, for, for related to these, the AAV neutralizing antibody assays. You can go on our website, criver.com, and through uh, our LIMP system, uh, LTM, uh, we can, you can order the screening and titer assays. Uh, we, right now, AAV 2 and 9 uh, assays are available. In uh, next month, April, um, AV RH74 and AV8 will be coming, and sample submission details are there. Uh, you can submit serum only 0.25 ml per serotype, and the corresponding uh, PCR assays are also available for all of these serotypes. Um, also, there's a blog online uh, on our website. There's a whole page with a lot of other details, including a technical sheet, uh, a lot of uh, qualification reports uh, and other data uh, is available on that one. To summarize, uh, AV2 and new nine neutralizing antibody screening and titer assays were developed for routine screening of NHP samples. Developing new, uh, neutralizing antibodies for other serotypes, I mentioned about AV8 and RH74, which will be available uh, soon. Analytical, as well as diagnostic sensitivity and specificity of AV2 and AV9 neutralizing antibody assays were very high, as demonstrated in the multi-tech, multi-day qualification study and data from six runs performed by two techs on three different days in the study was similar, confirming high reproducibility and ruggedness of the assay. So overall, AAV2 and AAV9 neutralizing antibody assays can be used for routine pre-screening of NHPs before undergoing gene therapy studies. And if you have any questions, here is my contact information and Charles River contact information. You can feel free to call or send an email and contact us. Thank you very much and thank you for listening.